Hi, and welcome. You're listening to the X-22 Report. My name is Dave, and this is episode 1317A, and today's date is June 27th, 2017, and the title of the episode is The Perfect Economic Storm is About to Hit, and Most People Are Not Ready. Let's get into the economic collapse financial news. Now, we're starting to see from different polls like the Gallup poll that people are starting to wake up and they're starting to realize that the economy isn't as great as it seems. Even the conference board and the conference board, they receive uh, grants from the government and they do whatever the government wants. But what's happening right now is that we're seeing that the uh, economic expectations for the future, they are tumbling right now. And we can see this in the conference board. We see this in the UMIT. We also now see it in the Gallup surveys, which is the people surveys where they go out to actual people and they ask them, what do you think the economy is? What your expectations are? And where do you think we are headed? And a lot of people are out there saying, well, the future does not look that great. So they know something's wrong in the background. They know something's not right. And many people are starting to wake up. Not enough, I believe. I believe there's a lot of people still sleeping, still living in that illusionary world that everything is going to be okay and everything's going to be fine and we have nothing to worry about. And what we're starting to see is each of these economic sectors, as we look at each one of them, each one is breaking down now. And we've talked about real estate for a very long time. And we can see right now that Kay Schiller, they came out with their report about home price growth, and they're saying that it slowed by 0.28% month on month. Now, this is the weakest since August of 2016. Now, remember, this time period for real estate from the spring to the summer to maybe the beginning of fall, this is the period of time. It's almost like the holiday season for real estate. This is when people go out and they purchase the homes. Usually, the winter months, it's a lot slower. And the prices right now, well, they're starting to come down. Actually, when I look around the country, and especially where I am, I see a lot of houses up for sale. And when I actually go to look at them to see what is actually going on, and these houses that are for sale, people are asking these outrageous prices that don't even make sense. And then when you look, you can see a month goes by, they start to lower it by 5,000. Another month goes by, they lowered another 10,000. And usually the rule of thumb for real estate, if no one comes to look at your home within like three weeks, your price is way too high. And some of these homes that I'm looking at, these homes have been for sale for over four months. Actually, there's one house that's been for sale for over a year now. Because what is happening is the market is coming down and all these people are chasing the market. We saw this happen back in 2007, 2008. And what we're seeing right now, and this is also confirmed with uh, Wolf Richter out where he's looking at San Francisco and many other areas where the bubbles are starting to pop and prices are starting to fall. Actually, Kay Schiller is looking at places like Cleveland, Boston, San Francisco, Washington, Tampa, Florida, And they are reporting that, yes, home prices are falling in these areas. Now, for San Francisco, this is the second monthly drop of home prices, which tells us that people are not going out and they're not purchasing the homes like they used to. So what happens is these people start lowering their prices. And this has already begun. Now, on top of this, Fannie Mae is out there. And they are saying that mortgage demand is cooling right now. Lenders, they've increased their concerns over the economic conditions. And what they're seeing right now is less and less people coming out to take out a mortgage. The report across the three loan types, the share of lenders who reported growth in purchase mortgage demand, dropped to the lowest net reading in years for a second quarter period. And we can see this where going back to 2015, going to 2016 to 2017, the mortgages where people normally would be getting them, it is declining. And we're reaching a point where people are saying, you know something, I'm just completely out of the market. Now, the report pointed out 
that this drop in demand for purchased mortgages confirms Fannie Mae's report earlier in June that found that Americans were souring on the housing market. Now, we have to remember, how was this housing market created? It was created by the central banks. It was created by hedge funds, investment companies. It was created by foreign investors, by speculators. It was not created by the everyday person. And they only did it in specific cities. And now what's happening is in those areas, we've reached the top of the bubble and people are trying to sell their homes at the height of the bubble. And when you see more and more houses go up for sale, especially when you see a house and then right next door there's another house and then two houses down, there's another house for sale. You know, we are at the top of the bubble. And when you see no traffic coming to these homes and these houses stay on the market longer and longer and longer, you know, there is a major problem brewing. Now, is this happening in every single part of the country? No, it happens in small isolated areas and then it starts to spread all over the place. Go back to 2007, 2008, where everything was booming. And I remember it, remember it very well up in New York, traffic dried up. But in Miami, they were building like crazy. There were speculators all over the place. Six months later, Miami came to a complete screeching halt. And this is what's going to happen throughout the country because we can already see that the Fed is saying, okay, we're ready to sell our toxic real estate and we're going to get top dollar. And what they're going to do is they're going to sell it at the height, try to unwind everything they possibly can. And when everything drops again, they're just going to buy up everything for pennies on the dollar. This is how central banks work. Now, one thing that we are looking at is the tech stock bubble. Now, remember, this has been blown up by central banks. It's been blown up by Switzerland, the Bank of Japan, the Fed, and many others where they've been purchasing tech stocks like crazy, trying to keep the stock market up the nasdaq up and they're continually and they're buying a lot more stocks than just that but what we're seeing right now is that the tech stock area well it looks like things are falling apart rapidly so the nasdaq etf has broken its bull market trend line even worse it has failed to reclaim this line despite a strong bounce this is a major warning that the upwards momentum is gone. The next leg down, well, it's going to be a doozy. This is a big deal for the broader market, as even the S&P 500 has seen most of its gains produced by large tech companies such as Apple, Amazon, and many others. If the tech area goes, the entire market will go. And we can see there's major, major problems in this area. Now, very interestingly, the IMF was looking at Trump's policies, his economic policies, and they were basing the GDP forecasts on this. And what we've seen already is that the IMF is saying, okay, Trump, he has no economic policies. He can't get anything done. And the IMF right now has cut their GDP forecast to 2.1 in 2017 from 2.3 not that much of a difference and we know that the imf has always been wrong so why are they out there saying this what does this tell us well it tells us a couple of things first they're saying that the trump administration will not be able to deliver the pledged tax cuts and higher infrastructure spending and because he can't do anything the economy is not going to do well even if he did those things, they would say his economic policies would have made the economy even worse. So no matter which way you look at it, he's not going to win. He's not going to win in how this economy is coming down because their whole agenda is basically to blame it on him. So basically the IMF is saying that we've removed the assumed fiscal stimulus from our forecast and this is why it doesn't look good. And we can see going out all the way to 2022, they're just showing that the GDP numbers are continually declining, 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 never improving. Now, when we look at the entire situation, the global situation, we can see that the economies of the world, they're not going to get any better. Actually, since 2008, since the Great Recession, most of the economies haven't moved at all. Actually, 
from all the printing and the creation of all this currency, of all this debt, by moving currencies from one bank to another, having each bank uh, do stimulus at different times, by saving the banks, by buying up toxic real estate, by buying treasury bonds, all they have done was created an illusion that the economy has been improving. I mean, a lot of corporations do this. Remember Enron, where everyone was like, wow, this company is amazing. They're doing fantastically. Everything is great. It was an illusion. And all of a sudden, one day, it all disappeared. This same thing's going to happen once again. Because when we look at all these economic indicators and we look at retail, we look at real estate, we look at the GDP calculation, we look at the unemployment calculation, we look at the corporate defaults, we look at the loan creation, we look at the credit impulse, we start to look at all these different things and many other things, we start to realize when we put all the pieces together that this is an illusion that the central banks have created to convince everyone that they fixed the problem since 2008. They did this on purpose because what they've been doing is they've been preparing for the next downturn. That's what this was all about because they knew eventually that the system couldn't carry on. The world cannot handle any more debt. And people are out there saying, well, can't they just keep printing and printing and printing? Well, someone has to pay for the interest. And if the American people and the European people, they don't have jobs and these people aren't taxed, who's paying for it? Yes, they can take out more uh, money from the Fed where the Fed will loan them the money, but then you have more interest on the debt and you add to the debt. This is a no-win situation. There's nothing they can do at this point. Yes, they can write off the debt, but central bankers don't do that. They don't like to do that because if they do do it, then it shows other countries, well, wait a minute, they wrote off the debt. We would like to write off the debt. And if that country writes off the debt, we would like to write off the debt. That means everyone is going to write off the debt and the central bankers, they will not allow this to happen. So they create these illusions and they make the system crash. Now with the crash, it allows them to do extraordinary, extra extraordinary things that they normally wouldn't be able to do during a normal cycle. And once it crashes, this is when they can do other things like, oh, we need the funds to pay a lot of this debt. Let's go into bank accounts. Oh, wait, we have a bail-in document. It just comes in so handy during these periods of time when we know there's a lot of debt out there and we need to pay this debt down. We will just use the people's money to save the banks, to pay the debt and basically fund the central bank's operation. That's what that's all about. They don't care about the people because they're prepared and ready to take whatever they need to keep their system alive. They never want you to see their system fail because if you see it fail or if someone writes off the debt, their whole system comes tumbling down. People say then, why do we need all this debt if we could just write it off? They don't want this to happen because their entire mission is to continually restart the same exact system, but for, start from scratch. What did they do after World War II? They started their system once again from scratch. Yes, they call it different names. This is Bretton Woods. This is the petrodollar later on. And they do this to make everyone think that something else is really happening. But what's really happening is they're starting the system over and they let it go for a while. They come off the gold standard and we're back to where we are. And then we have some type of war which covers up everything that we've seen and people forget about it. And then they restart it once again. And we're at that point where they are ready to bring down the system. They just need the event to go along with it. They need a narrative to explain it away because they don't want to be blamed for this. And they're prepared and ready to do this. This is why you see all of this happening all at the same time. This is why you see the interest rates being uh, bumped up. This is why you see the unwinding of the balance sheet. This is why you see everything happening around the world. All of this happening at the same time. Now, a lot of people, they're stuck in this illusionary world. They don't want to look at you know things 
outside of the corporate media, what they're telling them, what the central bank is saying. They don't want to see that, oh, maybe the economy's in trouble. They like living their lives where they use their credit cards, they have their job, they're getting their paycheck, and they really don't care about anything else until they lose their job and they start to realize something's wrong here. Or when they try to sell their house and they say, what's going on here? Or they lose their job before the collapse and they say, how come I can't find another job? This is when people normally wake up. So most of the people, the majority of the people who are out there in the world today, they are not prepared and ready for what is coming. And we can see there is a perfect storm headed our way. Think about all the economic indicators that are pointing to a recession. I would say we're in a recession already and we're heading towards this collapse. And as each thing comes in saying, you know, housing prices are dropping now, mortgages, they're drying up, loan creation is stalling, the credit impulse is going negative, corporate defaults are on the rise. And you could just see this retail is the retail apocalypse where things are a disaster. And we could see that all these things are all happening at one time. This is the perfect storm. We see the automobile industry that is in trouble once again. So we're headed towards this perfect storm and it's about to hit. And this is why everyone needs to be ready and prepared for what is coming. Listen, everyone, thanks a lot for listening. Be well, be safe, and especially be prepared. Thanks a lot.